Okay, so we currently have this uh, graphic where we're making a gradient of colors from the, the building footprints based on the distance to the periphery of the block. And we're going to adapt this now to uh, utilize points which we've created. In this case, uh, I'm going to use points that I'm going to say represent uh, bus stops or uh, could be metro stops or it could be um, restaurants or whatever kind of attractions you find interesting. Um, so in this case I've got these seven points uh, on a separate layer. And using this definition from last time, uh, nothing else has changed. I'm going to input these points. Again using this black hexagon object specific for points. Right click and set multiple points. Now say I want this to represent a, um, a walking radius. I could add a circle um, called circle CNR, center normal and radius. Of, let's say 200 meter walking radius just to visualize that uh, you can use this later for the uh, illustrator output but we're going to turn it off for now Now what we want to do is to replace these points which represent the peripheries of the blocks with these points which is as simple as dragging and replacing. Turn these points off and we can see how our gradient has adapted now. Uh, we no longer need this. We can leave the blocks there for now. And I'm going to go and flip these colors. Actually, I can make, I can have greater control over the C M Y K values if I duplicate this whole object. Let's copy and paste. And I'm going to make a separate control for C and for M. In this case, I'm going to reverse this domain to 1 to 0. And I'm going to also reverse this domain. And again, what this is going to give me is 10 different layers representing these 10 different RGB values. And it will assign specific blocks or building footprints to each layer. And we can change this from 10 uh, to, let's say, 12. Um, we use, for example, a panel object. Or we can even go something lower. So we just want four steps instead of ten. We drag the four to each of these uh, division and multiplications. So essentially here we're rounding by four instead of rounding by ten. Round by twelve instead. So now we would have twelve layers. Let's go back to 10. Okay, and then all I need to do is to double click. Then turn off after I'm done baking. 
what you see here are 10 new layers and uh, that's good for now. Now after I've baked that I'm going to turn these circles back on. Maybe this will be helpful um, in the illustrator diagram. I can bake these also to the points layer. Okay. I'm going to select everything and move it over by say 1500 meters. I want to return these blocks. So I'm going to right click, select the blocks, and copy those back 1500 meters. Okay. So I've still got uh, these blocks sorted by building footprint sorted by RGB values and layers. Even though they're all shown as black here, I can adjust this in Illustrator. And let's add two new points again on the points layer. And let's say that these are going to represent uh, subway stops. I'm going to select these objects, deselect these. I'm going to set new points. And I'm going to make the radius here 400 meters instead. Now you see how the gradient has adjusted itself to two attractors instead of seven as it was before. But same idea, and um, all we need to do now is bake these again. It'll go to the same layers because we're using the same values. And should be good and ready to output to Illustrator. One more thing we can do with these uh, circles and points is to just get some, some data that will help um, explain this graph a bit better. Um, we can see here again we've got 696 points and let's see how many of these points fall within uh, these circles. Then we can create a statistic saying for example however what percentage of, um, of buildings fall within a 400 meter walking radius of these points or subway stops as we want to call them. Okay, um, If you double click and type in See, there's this test a point for BREP inclusion. And the BREPs we want to use are these circles here. And the points are these points here. And we use a panel. We can see which are true and which are false. Currently, we've got them all as false. Um, let's make these planar surfaces. Still false, and now let's extrude. basically making these solids to make sure that they contain the points. Extrude using a unit Z. Centimeters. And then we just want to move it down So now we're definitely containing these points. 
Okay, that's better. Now we've got a list of trues and falses. We can hide all of this. Then let's sort this list. And we can see here um, that 1 represents true and 0 represents false. And we scroll down, we can see where it changes. Five seventy six, so we can say five hundred and seventy six um, are within, and the rest are without. So we can extract data that kind of way. One thing we can do to check that this is accurate, because it seems not quite right, is um, called. Uh, pattern and here where it's asking for a list to call and a calling pattern so the list we give it these points in the pattern here and we see it's only working for one circle at a time that means that we need to right click and select graph now it's considering both circles simultaneously. And we can see that there are 286 points uh, within and 120 points without. So if we hover over this call object, we see that there are 406 locally defined values. Um, 286 within the one circle and 120 within the other circle. So that can just help for creating statistics to use in our infographic and um, that's all we need for now. Uh, we can hide all of this and we're ready to export to Illustrator.